I don't personal train anymore. I don't work one-on-one anymore, except in a coaching relationship, meaning by phone, by Skype, by FaceTime, with someone anywhere in the world. I never exercise with a client, and I would advise you not to be doing that if you're coaching someone online. That's a ridiculous service job that takes you back light years. Imagine exercising for six to eight sessions a day. That kind of thing last happened in the 80s as the norm, and it carried over into the 90s for those addicted fitness instructors who ignored the well-known risks science had discovered by then. My master's thesis, by the way, in fact, was about how to avoid exercise injuries from aerobics. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Fitness Marketing Mastery, where I share marketing and sales strategies that are anything but sleazy, salesy, and pushy. In fact, they're easy, enjoyable, even fun. So you can build a life and a business that you love, even in this post-pandemic time. And let me change that to especially in this post-pandemic time. It is best of times, worst of times. It's the best of times. If you've got a strategy and you know exactly how to message clearly your ideal customer and you get that message in front of them regularly, consistently at the right time in the place on the path to them asking, looking, seeking for a solution and you have gold, my friend. But listen, Back to the 80s in the 90s for a minute. Trainers did it. I did it. During the pandemic, trainers who would never have done it, meeting in person with a client, did it when they were meeting with them virtually. What was that about? Probably discomfort, a lack of confidence and belief in what you were doing being enough. And that is something valuable to acknowledge and to deal with. You are no less valuable training a client while they're at home in their living room than you are when you're there with them in person. The exercise done to proper fatigue is just as available to them and just as valuable when you're virtually there. You, in fact, monitor them less keenly while you yourself are doing the exercise. Upgrade your services by making sure you've given tips to them instead. Provide a more accurate cheat sheet for them as well as homework between sessions. Listen, do these things. Be in against a darker background, wearing light clothing or vice versa. Wear form-fitting clothing when you're shooting those cheat sheets and be sure you have a quiet space so I can hear you, you can hear me and check your internet connection. I mean, all things that should go with that saying, but they don't. (laughs) You exercising all day is a super quick way to burn out. It's a way to reduce the value of your time and trash your body. And why would you want to send the message to a client like that? You're the role model, right? But that's not why I don't personal train anymore. I can't afford to. My time per hour would price me at a ridiculous rate. If I'm not making 500 an hour, it's hard to justify time spent training when I've got other things to do in my business that have a whole lot more value. Fitness professionals today don't exercise for a living. I've heard some say that, and I totally and wholeheartedly have to disagree. They support others exercising for a living. There is a big difference. I have a gym owner friend who, you know who you are if you're listening, by the way, has for years said I sell sweat for a living. In my opinion, that's a functional mindset issue and a message to staff and the public that loses clients and trust. 
What he really sells is hope, optimism, and inspiration. And so do you. You can stand out online in this crowded market, even if you don't personal train as we know it anymore. It's actually not hard to stand out online. There are a lot of copycats making it really easy to be unique. Pay less attention to what somebody else is saying, meaning your competition, on their social media posts. Pay more attention to what your customers are saying. Respond to that. Know your customer better than anyone else. That is good copywriting. And if you're not good at it, not good at copywriting right now, you can get better at it. Here are five examples where you've got to be good at copywriting. Your email subject lines or those emails you write are not ever getting written, getting open and read. Your emails, the body of that email has to be good. Otherwise, what are we doing? We're skimming. We're actually looking for the bullets. So take a good look at your newsletter, at your email. Are there bullet points in it? Or you go on and on and write long sentences with more than two or three sentences in them, long paragraphs. Really important to take a look at how do you break up your copy. Social media posts. That's the copy that's above and below your image. I don't just mean the the words on your meme or a picture, but the copy that you post with it. That's actually becoming almost like a mini blog post. It's allowing you on Instagram, especially to get read, to share your thoughts, to share some inspiration with someone. And they're reading those because they're short enough for attention spans that are that of a guppy and long enough to relay the who you are behind your picture, your perfection, right? Which is what we post online. So there's subject lines for emails, your emails themselves, your social media posts, and your blog or your video titles. Similarly to your subject line in an email, if the blog title and if the video title isn't any good, it's not going to get open. Go look at your YouTube channel right now. And if you have any videos that say testimonials, you better change it really fast. Your video script. So yeah, your video script. So sometimes I think I'm so good. I could just turn on the camera and I'm going to just go off the cuff. And really that doesn't ever work out really well. That's the kind of video that I'll do 10 takes on because I didn't even know what I was going to say beyond that first sentence. I just thought I could wing it. And then when you get the camera rolling and pointing right at you, it doesn't really work out that way. So you want to get succinct. Two to three minute videos when you're doing a video on Facebook, especially if it's for an ad, that's really the sweet spot. Somewhere between two and six minutes is really, you don't want to go any longer than that but probably on the short side is best. And you better have a little energy. You better pick up the pace and accelerate your speech because if you're talking like this really slowly, you're going to lose them. They're scrolling. They're gone. You've lost them. And you have to write that out. You probably are going to have to rehearse it. And you can do that much easier if you're prepared. But there's a bonus. That's five examples of where you got to be good at copywriting, your email subject lines, your emails, your social media posts, blog, and video titles, and last, your video script. But the next one, I'm giving you a bonus template, and that is descriptions for hiring your virtual or your staff members if they're literally right there with you. Those alone, those templates are worth the registration fee for my marketing to women copywriting workshop alone. It's happening July 21st and it's three to 6 p.m. Pacific time. Do that math yourself. I'm time zone challenged, so I can't help you too much with that. But on that, I'm going to share how I've learned to copyright and spare you from the mistakes I've made. But share what I've used to grow from $5,000 a month to six figures a month using original content that only you can create and everyone will want to copy, but they can't 
because they can't tell your stories. You're going to think outside the box. Think about how you can really do well and do what we all have to do to be in business, which is solve a problem. What is it that you solve? How do you do it uniquely? What's special about your method? And then why you? If you can get clear and get a clear, compelling message to your audience that you want answering those questions, you can create a thriving business right now and any time in the future, no matter what happens, you'll be prepared. I'm going to leave the link below the show notes to join me. It's fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash copywriting for more details on the copywriting workshop about what's happening, what you'll get, and how to register and save your seat. So I'm keeping this reserved for a small group because you're coming into it with my private mastermind members. And I want to make sure that everybody, especially they, get individual attention and feedback on the copy that you create during the session. So there will be plenty of content delivered. There will be moments when you can actually stop and use the creativity that I inspire and create copy based on whatever it is you bring to the workshop that you really want to solve. If you're writing a sales page right now, if you're about to do a launch and you need that sales page, you need a product copy, you need emails, you can work on them during the session and get some feedback to make them really good. Look, this may be patting myself on the back, but I don't consider myself a fitness marketer. I consider myself a fitness marketing surgeon, somebody who can actually help you look at your copy and make it better and make it uniquely you so that when someone, your ideal client and customer finish reading it, they don't just want a trainer. They don't just want a coach. They want you and only you. And why would we want it any other way? So what are you waiting for? First of all, finish what you're doing, walking, lifting, taking care of you, and then go check it out, fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash copywriting. And I'll see you on the flip side.